The game of life has a running clock. There's no timeout and certainly no button to rewind. So what do you do if life doesn't go the way you planned? Take a look. Jonathan Evans is an author, pastor, former NFL player, and chaplain for the Dallas Cowboys. Growing up as the son of well-known pastor Tony Evans, Jonathan was riding on cruise control until he realized that he didn't know his purpose in life. In his book, Your Time Is Now, Jonathan shares his personal story of finding his calling, and he wants to help you do the same. Jonathan Evans joins us now via Skype. Jonathan, great to have you with us today. You had a... You had a dream for your life. You wanted to run out of that tunnel in an NFL game, have a wonderful career, and then a slew of injuries brought a premature end to that dream. How did you handle the feeling of, what am I going to do now when you hadn't planned for anything else? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, like you said, I had that dream, and to, all I wanted to do was run out of the tunnel and play in the NFL. And in uh, five years, I was on five or six teams from everything from hurt, carted off the field, traded. I mean, anything bad that could happen, happened. And then, uh, you know, my wife said, I think it's time to move on. And I finally got a call from the Kansas City Chiefs uh, to come back and play. And I looked at my wife and I said, see, God still wants me to play in the NFL. And um, as I was working out to go to the Kansas City Chiefs, I tore my Achilles. Oh. And that was the final, the final blow. Uh, so I ended up limping in the seminary. The place I was running from is what I limped into. It's like Jacob. When you wrestle with God, he'll change how you walk. And so I, I limped in the seminary. And while I was there, I got a call to come back and be the chaplain for the Dallas Cowboys. And it was, that, it was as if God was saying, I take your greatest misery and turn it into your greatest ministry. Yeah. And that's just the way it worked out. At one point in your life, you wanted nothing to do with the pulpit. So, you know, what happened in that interim that you were willing to limp into <laughs> having a, a completely different career. Well, you know, you know, your dad being Tony Evans, you know, you try, you, you try as hard as you can as a son to stay away from that because it's almost like Michael Jordan's son trying to try out for the Bulls itself. I mean, it just kind of doesn't work uh, because you're always going to be compared to one of the greatest of all time. And, uh, you know, so I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. Uh, but God would, would use that fear and that doubt, and he would take me into scenarios where I was still kind of having to do it, almost as if he was preparing me. And once I went into seminary, it's almost like I just got thrown in there, and uh, I realized that it was a gift. I realized it was a passion. I realized the opportunity was given and the experiences were had. And once those four things come together, you've run into purpose. Jonathan, I loved your book. The title is Your Time Is Now. You talk a lot in the book about uh, the story of Joshua from the Bible. What can we learn from him? Well, yeah, when he experienced a great loss in Deuteronomy 34, before you turn the page to Joshua 1, Moses died. I mean, and it says now, um, after the death of Moses, uh, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua. And so uh, one thing that Joshua had to do is realize that even through his pain and his mourning, uh, God would call him to a monumental calling. And he would have to stay, he would have to move forward uh, because if he stayed with Moses, he would be stuck on the wrong side of his calling. And there's some things in our lives um, that we don't want to put down because they've been so good for us for so long. Yeah. And as long as hold on to him, we'll still be stuck on the wrong side of the column because God said that Moses cannot go. And so people have to think about what about themselves or what about their friends or what about the things that they have in their life? Are they unwilling to put down? But they may be, uh, that may be the thing that's holding them on the wrong side of the Jordan of their calling. And for me, it was fear. For me, it was doubt. Uh, for me, it was uh, comfortability and just being an athlete and not trying to move. I didn't want to put it down. And God was saying, until you put this down, you will not run out of the tunnel which is your dream. And I've been running out of the tunnel for 10 years. So God always wanted it, but he always wanted it his way, not my way. So I had to put it down. Well, there's a level of surrender in that that every Christian has to go to through. How can a person know if they're on the path that God wants them to be on? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great question is knowing that you're on God's path and not just your path. You know, a lot of people think God's voice is that voice they hear in their head that tells them what they already want to do anyway. And the reality is, no, that's your voice. That's why it sounds like you. Um, and so you know that it's God's voice because God, as high as the heavens are above the earth, are his ways from your ways and his thoughts from your thoughts. 
God's voice is that voice that's taking you into the uncomfortable place consistently or the illogical place that you're always trying to justify out of, but you just can't. You're trying to justify it. You're trying to say, well, that doesn't make sense. And you're trying to say, well, what's the point of that? But you can't get rid of it. It's just a constant thing that stays on you. And that's when you know God is trying to push you. It's just like Genesis 12. The word of the Lord came to Abraham and said, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house. In other words, the word of the Lord came to Abraham to push him out of everything that he was comfortable with. And a lot of times people don't want to put down their comfort in pursuit of their calling. And God's voice will always pull you out of your comfort because he's not focused on the comfort. He's focused on the calling and the advancement of his kingdom. And so really, it's just about putting down that comfortability and moving forward to what God wants you to do. You know, sometimes that pulling of God is also uh, in our lives a letting go of things that 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 we care about, people that we care about. Uh, You lost your mom recently. You've lost a number of other family members. When your mom knew she wasn't going to live, she sat down and talked with you guys, and she had a very uh, direct and meaningful conversation. What did she tell you? Yeah, she said, I mean, we cried the the moment that we found out that my dad said it's terminal and there's nothing any doctor can do. It was just a waiting game. And I just remember my mom saying, are you guys finished yet? (laughs) As we were crying. And I said, I guess so. And uh, and so she said, sit down. And she said, you know, this is spiritual warfare. We've lost, you know, like, I don't know, five to seven members of our family in a span of a year and a half. And now this is happening. And she said, it's spiritual warfare. And one thing the Evans family will not do is tuck tail and run uh, when the enemy is, is, is trying to use this for his work and to take us out as a family in the ministry that we're called to. And so she just said, if you're called to preach, you're going to preach. If you're called to sing, you're going to sing. If you're called to to disciple and and write a Bible study, that's what you're going to do, because it's about the advancement of his kingdom. And my response was, my response was, um, how in the world can you be talking about ministry at a time like this? And that's when she said to me, she said, Jonathan, because that's the reason why you exist. And you never let that go. You never um, um, forget. You never let these threats make you forget what you've been called to do, use them as a catalyst uh, for what you've been called to do. And so she pushed us forward and she said, this is what we're going to do. I know you're going to take care of me, but at the end of the day, you got to take care of your responsibility that God has given you. And that's exactly what you're going to do. And I won't accept anything less. That's, so That's what the book is all about. Your time is now. How do we do that? How do we push through? How do we grab hold of God's purpose? How do we make a difference and follow the calling that's intended for our lives? The book is called Your Time Is Now. It's available in stores nationwide. Jonathan, wonderful to talk to you today. Thank you. Well, thank you so much.